particularly for a younger audience that aren't familiar with the biblical inspiration and, and this uh, production, can you just tell us a little bit about the story and the, the themes that it explores that make it so contemporary and feel so relevant? Well, it's the, um, it's the story of a, uh, a man, a king, who marries his dead brother's wife and in consequence inherits a stepdaughter. And the stepdaughter is sort of 16 years old, roughly speaking, and trying out her sexuality. And she tries it out, first of all, on the prisoner in the dungeon, who is John the Baptist, who Herod is in prison because he fears the influence that John will have. And when Salome gets nowhere with John the Baptist, uh, she is persuaded by Herod to dance for him. And in consequence of that, she demands of Herod, if she dances, uh, will, he, will he give her anything she asks? And he agrees because he's a little bit drunk and uh, he lusts after his stepdaughter. And so when it's all finished, she says, I want the head of John the Baptist which she then takes and kisses. And it's a pretty grisly story. Not at all the sort of thing you would imagine that uh, the author of The Importance of Being Earnest would have written. But those were the things that I think after his release from prison, he was going to go on experimenting with. He wanted to write a play about Jezebel. Um, uh, it never got written. He was, he was a long slide into the grave from then. But I think he would have done a lot more with experimental theatre if he'd lived on. What do you think Oscar would have made particularly of this production? Well, I think he would have been uh, bowled over by Jessica. Um, I don't think that... It was played once in his lifetime only when he was in prison, and that was in Paris, uh, and he didn't get to see it. But I think he felt that uh, it needed an actress of extraordinary stature to be able to play the role of Salome. It was in rehearsal in 1893 when the Lord Chamberlain, who was the censor of plays then, banned it from the stage. I mean, it was an old law which prevented biblical subjects being shown on the stage. But I think, apart from that, the idea of that there were overtones of necrophilia and uh, I suppose you'd call it incest, it's not quite, um, were, were something which the Victorians couldn't possibly have stomached. So the best thing to do was to keep it off the stage altogether. But Oscar uh, wanted Sarah Bernhardt to play the role, and she very nearly did. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't say that there is nobody who has been able to play it since. There have been many good actresses who have played it. Um, but I think after Sarah Bernhardt, uh, Jessica would probably fill Oscar's bill pretty well. This film exists because of the passion of Al Pacino um, for your grandfather's work. Can you talk a little bit about what you think people are going to take, particularly away from the documentary that Al's made? Well, I think people who are uh, fans of Al Pacino will find... Uh, Al, Al is not one who gives a lot of interviews, and certainly you don't get nearly uh, two hours of him um, exposing his inner self uh, on film. So anyone... Um, I mean, there was the documentary Looking for Richard uh, when to a certain degree he did just that and this is a follow-on from that so anyone who's uh, a great fan of Al's will find a lot of a lot of nice meat in this new documentary um, in the film itself um, I think both he and Jessica fulfill the roles in a, a quite extraordinary way uh, I I found them uh, possibly one of the best interpretations I've seen for a very long time. Well, perhaps one could say that having, having played these roles in the past and looking at the psychological explanations for the characters that he has played, uh, it was a bizarre but nevertheless logical uh, uh, consequence that he should come on to play Herod, uh, whose psychology is... Uh, say that you know, at, at best rather doubtful um, but I think that's it's something which uh, yes certainly he's it's I think it's it at first sight it doesn't look uh, very much like the sort of role that Al Pacino would play but if you look underneath it I think uh, having played the other roles that he has um, it's not entirely illogical well 
I think that, you know, for the first um, probably two-thirds of the 20th century, he was just considered as a, a first-rate funny man str struggling to get out above the second division of literature. And people didn't look at his work uh, it, with anything other than a, 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 an eye saying, well, you know, he was, yeah, he was perhaps not really worthy of great study. But if you look at um, some of the works which are very seldom reprinted, some of his essays, there's a, um, there's a humor, there's a depth to them, there's a philosophy to them. And apart from anything else, he represents a, um, a, a rebellion against uh, authority, which in a strange way, I think he becomes a slightly odd role model for a younger generation. I mean, who between the ages of 16 and 25, as shown by the vote in Scotland, doesn't rebel against the established order? Um, and I think Oscar represents somebody who rebelled against an established order. He is a now a recognized literary figure in history. So with the, those two qualities combined, uh, what better than to take him as a role model for a, a young generation.